Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Advisor. Today, I'm so excited because we have Daniel the Healer here, and I am so excited because he's doing a podcast series with us, and he's just an amazing person. He uh, he does a lot of different things, and he, today, he wants to talk about the paradigm of wealth, and I'm very excited to hear what he has to say, and I love hearing because you really go really deep into depth about spirituality and all different areas of it. And I today, I look forward to our conversation and tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Hello, hello, and uh, nice to be here again. Uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, so let's dive right into it. I'm Daniel the Healer. I am a holistic, intuitive energy healer. I just really like that. Um, the You know, we are... The beings that function on many levels, the physical, the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual. And most people have absolutely no ideas about the spiritual. So I really like to work there and enlighten people about who they are and what uh, the whole aspect that they are not familiar with. You know, you for your body, you go to the gym, you eat well, you do kind of things like that emotionally. Um, mentally you you even sometimes do puzzles and and uh, mental exercises but spiritually and energetically uh, we're not trained to do anything and so since most of us is actually uh, located in our spiritual um, part of ourselves uh, and and we don't know about it then it kind of um, it helps to know more and just to be able to function better on that level. Yes, I agree totally. I think a lot of people uh, tend to um, think more inside the box, you know, and it's it's changing as time goes on. We have a lot of spiritual people out there, but there is that group of people who, you know, if they don't, if they don't see it, they don't believe it. And uh, unfortunately, you know, we have, you know, it's people like you you know, who really help people see things from a different light. Now, today you want to talk about the paradigm of wealth. Now, what exactly is the paradigm of wealth? Well, I've struggled with finances a lot in my life. Um, I kind of, I came here resisting. Uh, that was my main modality. I really initially did not like, like physical life. I felt that the... Um, Heaven had expulsed me into this penal colony on earth that I had to. And so I went on, basically, I went on to a sit down strike and I said, I'm not going to move until um, the divine intervenes and, and brings me back to where I was. And um, I also had a lot of opposition with my dad. Uh, he he was a very, very successful man in his own right. And so I felt if I became unsuccessful, that would be my way to punish him. So I became a nerd to well and uh, I resisted a lot. I did the least amount possible that, you know, I could get away with. Yeah. My motto was don't do it today if you can do it tomorrow. And so in the process then, um, I kind of had a hard time financially. Yeah. Um, so over time and with my spiritual teacher uh, who gave me various suggestions and things, I accumulated various points that uh, helped me in creating more abundance and wealth in my life. And this is kind of a summary of those various points that uh, I used to to you know at this point i'm pretty flush and i'm i'm doing nicely and which is really good i mean it took me a long time uh, but you know i can pay my bills i have a comfortable life i um well, things are good yes and that's the way it should be you know i i think a lot of people um don't realize that you know it, it it's hard when you struggle because when you struggle um, a lot of people get stuck in life and they give up hope and, you know, anything is possible. Now, when you talk about the different points, you know, can you go a little bit more in depth about that? And like, what exactly were the the steps that you did to change your outlook and to change your behavior that got you to the point where you are today? 
Well, first thing is to realize that um, money is an energy. It's an energy of exchange. And all these energies are neutral. Wealth, abundance, pro prosperity, money, they're neutral. They don't have an attitude in themselves. It's you as humans that hold an attitude about them. And so I put together 22 different suggestions uh, over time that you know, one here, one there. And it's not like you immediately have to go in all 22. <laughs> you, you know, you can maybe do one or two and that and some will resonate with you and some will not. Yeah. And, and so uh, the, the main aspect here is for you to see you. Uh, if it resonates, you kind of, oh, yeah, that would be fun to try. Yeah. And, and then you try it and see if it makes a difference. So the, the first one of these, uh, you know, we the church has done this for a long time, uh, that you tithe to the church. And so they say, well, if you tithe to us, you will, the divine will pay you back tenfold or, or whatever. But the idea is for you to tithe to yourself. Right. So for every dollar that comes in, you put like um, whatever percentage you decide, mm -hmm. you set aside okay. for you into what I call a fun fund. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> and you really have to be very good with this. You have to adhere to it you know yeah. you accumulate some some money in your fund fund and then comes an emergency and you say oh yeah i have all this money saved set aside for me i'll use it on this emergency no no if you do that you're actually putting out the energy that the emergency is more important than you oh i see oh that's very interesting so the fund fund is strictly for you to pamper yourself to get some luxuries to maybe go on a cruise if you like that sort of an idea and things like that that's what it's used to now if you already um, tithe to a church maybe you can change the percentages you can do some to the church some to yourself right. but if you don't tithe to a church then tithe to yourself find a good formula for you um, we started with 10%. Mm -hmm. For every $100 that came in, $10 will go into a fund fund. And uh, that's my wife and I. That's why I say we. Um, and it worked. It actually, what happens there when you do this, mm -hmm. which takes me into point number two, is that you value yourself. You're important enough to yourself to yeah. do the fun things that you wish to do and you don't go continuously for the have to's must um, need to um, survival you're you're actually creating the energy that attracts and when you value yourself value gets attracted to you yes i like that you know i never thought of it like that because i always put everything in one big fund so I, the emergency fund the fun fund always went into one big fund but you know what i do have separate funds and now that you say that that's a great idea because then if you see some money going into your fun fund then you kind of like wow you know i have some money to play with i can enjoy myself because i have x amount of dollars in there and it kind of relieves, just you saying it, kind of takes off tension. Like if I do this, I could actually, it, it will you know, give me some some money to play with. And I, I have money aside for me, my family to go somewhere or do something that's fun. And, and just the thought of that kind of enlightens me in a sense. Isn't that uplifting? Yeah, it is very uplifting. Yes, yes. And so... Like we talked about the last time, how you are a certain amount of energy and it's who you are as an energy that attracts like into your life from your universe. Yeah. And so if you have this fun fun or, you you know, which is a way to value yourself, then, oh, this person values themselves. Let's send them more value, Yeah. Uh, which to a certain, you know, um, not all value is financial, but some is. Yeah. So uh, anyway, 
it's important for you to value yourself and to have some fun. Wow. And that will attract more money to yourself and, and you do this with the tithing. So the, the third point here, we already covered too. The third point is to stop scarcity in your life. Mm. Uh, the All scarcity that we have in any particular, there's one underlying scarcity, which is the scarcity of time. Mm. And you need to understand that you cannot find time. Right. You make time. Yes. Yes. So, oh, I don't have the time for this. I don't have the time for that. Yeah. And and uh, then you don't do these things and you wind up watching television for two hours. I mean, it's a choice. It's a choice. Yes. Yes. And so uh, you have to... Uh, you have to make whatever it's, it's you set your preferences of how you're going to spend your time. And so if you place your choices between time and money, you always have to go with time. Yes. You know, like you, you go to a store and now there's even these uh, apps where you can read the barcode and it says, oh yeah, seven miles away, you can find it for $1. fifty less. And then you get in a car and you drive seven miles and, and you're stuck in traffic all to save $1. fifty. That's ridiculous. <laughs> you probably spent $1. fifty in gas just to get yes. there. Yes. <laughs> and, and your time and in the time that you wasted. Yeah. So you you got to make the choice that you're going for the time and not for the money. That makes so much sense, you know, and and so many people that I've spoken with, you know, I'll make suggestions and like, I don't have the time for that. I don't have the time. And I would be like, what's your schedule like? And they would have so much free time that they just devoted to things that were not as meaningful as the other things that they could have done that would have enlightened them maybe elevated them to new levels of life instead they chose like let's say going on social media or like you said watching tv it's how we prioritize ourselves i think what do you think yeah if it's you nicely <laughs> <laughs> put it into perspective so so uh the you see Everything in nature gives off more energy than it takes, yes. except for us humans. Mm -hmm. We don't seem to go that way. The earth gives more energy than it takes. The sun gives more energy. Plants give out more energy. Look at an orange tree. Yeah. An orange tree can put out 500 fruit every year, lives maybe 30 years. And in each orange, there's like eight or 10 seeds. So it puts out 20, 30,000 seeds in his life, in its lifetime, just to hope that one of those seeds will, once it dies, come out and create a new orange tree. Hmm. And all the rest of the oranges are for humans, for the animals. It just gives and gives and it's gives. Serious. Yeah. But we were. Uh, the, the, the opposite is that human consideration of scarcity and lack. Yes. You, you know, the, the Beers Diamond Cartel, do you know that they have warehouses and warehouses and warehouses full of diamonds? Oh, really? And they only release so much at a time to be able to artificially keep the price of diamond high. Okay. And diamond is just a piece of coal it's a piece of carbon yes and, yes you know was compressed and and mm -hmm. created this form and so we're like where's mine mm -hmm. this 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 whole scarcity and now there's this uh race to the bottom <laughs> where uh we get it cheaper come to walmart <laughs> or, <laughs> always low prices yeah and it's cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and the goods get cheaper and cheaper as well yeah 
and and so you're buying cheap goods that break down uh, more often, and you have to buy them more often right. uh, instead of getting something that's well made that you only have to buy once and it'll last at least twenty years. Exactly. So we naturally, or I mean, it's artificial, but we were trained into it. So we think it's natural, live in scarcity and um, and lackfulness. And that's just, it just doesn't work. Right. And so the first aspect there is you have to stop worrying about the cost of the necessity that you must buy. Yeah. You know, I mean... Yes, I understand. I've done this for a while and, and I've turned my life around. And But I don't look at prices anymore. Right. If I have to buy it, I have to buy it. And it costs whatever it costs. Right. I but agree. Worrying is a very, very undermining energy that like sabotages abundance and the flow. Oh, a hundred percent. I agree with you. I see so many people worry and especially they worry about things that don't even ha have, have happened yet. And instead of focusing on the present, a lot of people tend to have a habit of focusing on what the future is going to be like. And they worry about things that don't even exist yet. And then you see them sabotaging even their own bodies. And if you sabotage your body, how can you produce wealth if your clarity and your mind is focused on something that hasn't even occurred yet? Yes. And and the thing is, um, we didn't talk about that very much the last time where we talked about how you create your reality with thought, feeling, choice, decision, belief, yes. and attitude. Mm -hmm. And so now you worry about something and to, to, to uh, kind of disseminate this a little bit. Worry is a thought pattern, and you don't tend to worry about the past or the present. It's always about the future. Yeah. And so in your mind, when you worry, you think about the worst case scenario that will happen then. Yes. Yeah. So you're already actually, you're programming because you're repeating these bad scenarios in your mind. Yes. Through your thought processes. You're yes. actually putting that bad scenario into the future. And then you, you know, in your time, you like slowly walk into that moment. Yeah. And once you're in that moment, because you already put so much thought about the possibility of it going not well. Yeah. It is more likely to go not well. Right. You need to understand that. I mean, not you personally, but. Yeah, yeah. People need to understand that, that worrying really sabotages their lives. Right, exactly. And for worry, there's not really what you can do. You, it's, there's, no, there's no, you know, drug you can take not to worry. <laughs> yeah. When you, when you are in worry mode, the only thing you can do is you can tell your mind, stop. Yes. You just have to, to be ruthless about it. Yes. No, no worry, no worry. Right, exactly, exactly. Now, what was the next point you were going to mention? Because I like this. This is really good. <laughs> you have come up with some really great points. I like it. The next point is that you have to rely on your survival. You have a contract. You have a contract of life. The contract of life is with your higher self. Yeah. So your higher self is kind of the the one that created this life right. for you. Mm -hmm. And you you chose it at one point and you get into this into this life and right. until you're done the life is not over. And so you and for you to be able to live you you have to have the minimum needed your survival. Yeah. And so you have to realize that there is a bottom line and, right. and you have to realize and, and get this. It's like a shift of attitude. My survival is taken care of. I can rely on this. I don't have to worry about this. You know, I went through some really weird thing uh, a, a long time ago. Um, when we bought our first house 
And um, the, that was at the time when the mortgage rates were at 17%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so th th there was like, you know, people are complaining, oh, they're 7% now. And they, they're like pining for these times where they were 3% just a few years ago. But 6%, 7% is, is relatively normal yeah. as far as that's concerned. So consistent. And at that time, the, you, the mortgage, we were in Florida, the mortgage company was in New Jersey. And um, by the 17th, I'd be in default. So on the 14th, I would send out the check mm -hmm. because then it would still take a while to, to clear the bank. Now it's right. immediate and stuff like that. And we would send the check sometimes without us having money in the bank. Wow. And consistently, by the time the check cleared, some miraculous thing would have happened to have money in the bank for the check to clear. And it took us two years to figure out that there was always a miracle that at the last minute something would come in. Right. And then once we realized it, oh, it's covered. It always has been covered. Yeah. Wow. From then on, all of a sudden, the money was then at the beginning of the month, and it'd be no problem sending a check. Yeah. So you have to rely on this survival. You have a you have a contract. I, right. I have to repeat this. You have a contract, and so what you do uh, is that you slowly increase your bottom line. Right. You as oh, you know, so my survival is I get the rent, the food, the clothes, the gas money, uh, all the expenditure in life that I have to have, like uh, paying for insurance and, and what, what all that. Yeah. And then now you're tithing. So you're adding 10 percent to your bottom line. Right. So now fun gets included. So all of a sudden, your bottom line went from $3,000 to $3,300. Right. So you slowly lift the bottom up. Yes. And, and say, this is part of my survival. And so more and more comes in. Right. I love it. I love it. This is great. So then I want to talk to you about the success cube. Okay. What's the success cube? So this technique I originally learned from my spiritual teacher, and I kind of offer my own variation here, but the success cube is, see, we live in a three-dimensional world. Mm -hmm. And so everything in this three-dimensional world is three-dimensional and the cube is the three dimensions right and so what you do in a visualization in a in a meditative activity meaning your eyes are closed and you use your imagination you find yourself in a box you know a box has six sides three-dimensional yeah. cube and you're really cramped into the box it right. pushes against you. It pushes on the top. You, you maybe you have to crouch a little, and right. then with your arms you start to expand the sides, side by side. First, you push the sides of the box out, Ooh, like and that. you you know before you go into this activity, you know that it ha this has to do with your success. Mm -hmm. So you push the sides out. And side to side have to do with the areas of your life that you're successful in financially. So if you're really cramped, maybe you're only successful in one or two areas. If you push out, maybe you can get successful in three, four or five different areas. Right. And then you push up the ceiling. You push it up all at... Um, your arm's length. You don't really have to go further than the furthest that you can reach out with your arms. Right. And the height of your successful, of your success cube has to do with the amount of success 
that you can have. You know, a lot of people are minorly successful in many, many areas. Right. But if you now increase the height of your cube, then you can become more successful in all the areas that you have success in. I like and that. then the depth. Now, the cube turns around with you. So if you think, oh, I did the sides and I turn 90 degrees and it'll be front to back. No, the cube turns with you. You actually have to push forward and back. Mm. And the depth of the cube has to do with what success means to you. We are in a society, it's very sad in a sense, we are in a very one-dimensional society where the only evaluation, the only sign of your success has to do with the dollar amount. True. Singular, the more dollars you either have or earn, the more successful you are being perceived. Yes. It's very, very, very limited. Yes. So you need to figure out what success means to you, your happiness. Mm -hmm. You know, they say money can't buy you happiness. Right. That That is in true. But having money makes things really easier yeah. because we unfortunately are in a society where money has become the exchange. Yes. And plus, <laughs> I mean, th this is really ridiculous, you know, the, the people who who gravitate to the top. Yeah. They're the ones who are mo the most ruthless. Yes, it's so true. So true. But, you know, in politics, in business, in in um in banks, money management, yeah. investment firms, the the more ruthless you are, the more money you can make. Yes. And then the more money you have, the greater signs you you display a, a bigger mansion, uh, the, the uh, a twenty thousand dollar Rolex on your on your wrist. I mean, right. And then that's per being perceived by everybody else as oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so we all aspire for this one dimensional. But you know, I look look at. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I have to name names here, but look at Bill Gates. Mm -hmm. Has all the money in the world. He's in scarcity. Mm -hmm. It's never enough. Right. A lot of these wealthy people, you know, they, they talk of uh, Reagan brought in the trickle down economics. Yeah. We are unfortunately in what I call the trickle up economics. Mm -hmm. During this pandemic, over a trillion dollars of new money trickled up to the uh, elite. Right. And the disparity. And and then that is being revered. Yeah. Whereas having peace of mind, having uh, comfort, having uh, being able to be a good person and do good with your money. Right. And, all, all these things, what money, what success means to you, the achievement, the fulfillment, the yeah. personal satisfaction, the, the, this is all part of what you have to deal with right? Um, uh, in, in the meaning. So anyway, that's the success cube. I like that. I like that a lot. And have you ever noticed that the people who become more ruthless and they become so rich that eventually they a lot of them self destruct they they destroy themselves to the because they get to the point where they want so much and they 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 just do anything to get so much and then you start seeing their whole life kind of fall like a it's just like a a pile of bricks or if you play the game Jenka and all the you take the brick out and then uh -huh. you put the brick somewhere else and then all of a sudden if you don't do it right everything uh, just falls on you yes down to the floor I uh huh. I've and we're, so we're actually even going to address this uh, in a short while when you when we talk about the seven fears that you have to deal with. Yeah, and that's there too. the rich jerk. And, <laughs> 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 mm -hmm. 
And then uh, another thing is you need to rejoice in the good fortune of others. Yes. Uh, you know, I, oh, I would like this guy in a Bentley drive by. Oh, shit, where's my Bentley? Kind of, yeah. No, it doesn't work that way. Right. If, if you don't rejoice in the fortune of others. Yeah. Then when you're fortunate, then they're not going to rejoice in your good fortune. Right. Again, you attract of what you do. Exactly. So it's important that you deal with that. Get your happiness handled. Mm -hmm. The happiness is the fulfillment of your needs. Right. Craft your life that you have the circumstances where your needs are handled and mm -hmm. make your necessary shifts. Yes. Be responsible with your money. So, yes. You want, like we talked about the Bentley. I actually did go in, and sat into one. And after sitting into one, I, I don't want one. <laughs> <laughs> a car has to be comfortable. Not, not, it cannot just be a, yeah. a, a statement of your wealth. Right. I mean, ultimately, a car is just a, a metal box with four wheels that takes you here and there. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so you know, all these status symbols. That yes. If you go for that, you're giving your power away. Right. So you need to be responsible for you, with your money. Now, of course, you don't spend money you don't have. You right. Know? But, you know, you have to, quote, fake it till you make it. That's, <laughs> that's something that... that people talk about uh, when, when you go through shifts. So, okay, well, I'll fake it till I make it. I'll just get a credit card and I get into debt. No, yeah. that's not being responsible. Right. But, so you want a new car. Well, treat your old car the way you treat would treat your new car. Right. You put in your same care, your same attention, your same... Uh, way of dealing with the car as you mm -hmm. would your new car then you're going to attract the energy yes yeah. and it will open up shift your emotional involvement with your life mm -hmm. that's what we already talked about yes dealing with your old car the way it is that you would do your new car i like that idea i like it a lot do not resent paying taxes. Mm -hmm. The more taxes you pay, the more money you made. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> right? Yeah. No, so, yes, part of your money goes away, a percentage. But if you don't make any money, you don't pay any taxes. Right. And the more... You know, I mean, they say the more money you make, the more taxes you pay. But I think it's the other way around, if you look at it that way. Right. No, it's very true. I hear people all the time complain about that. <laughs> <laughs> so these are seven fears that you have to deal with. The first fear is the fear of losing the wealth. Mm -hmm. If you fear losing it, you will never let yourself have it in the first place. Oh, yeah. True, true. So you need to be comfortable with whatever level you are on. You cannot be wealthy out of fear of being poor. Right. So the second fear is the fear of becoming a rich jerk. You already <laughs> mentioned that just a while ago. So yeah. You, you see, you then the third fear is the fear of addiction that you become addicted to your wealth right and it's never going to be enough money regardless of how much you have i've seen that with many people the fourth fear is the fear of losing your freedom mm -hmm. now that you have a lot of money you have to go into a gated community you have to go and get a, a bodyguard right you have to hire professionals attorneys, CPAs, uh, investment advisors, right? other advisors. Um, your relatives may even ask you for money that you have money. 
Yeah. So, um, you know, they they say if you win a jackpot, the first thing you do is you don't tell anybody. Mm -hmm. Nobody, nobody, nobody. Mm -hmm. And then you you <laughs> you put the ticket in some safe box. Right. And, and you start planning. Uh, you you start finding people that uh, maybe setting up a trust or or whatever. Yeah. But and and so anyway, fear of losing your freedom. The next fear is the fear of guilt. You know about survivor's guilt when the plane goes down and the, the person who who came out unscathed and everybody di else died mm -hmm. and they feel so guilty that now what's good now I have to do something with my life right because I was saved yeah so, uh, uh, the fear of feeling hollow empty and meaningless that's when that is so one dimensional oh yeah just the amount of money that's the only thing that counts yeah. And the last fear is the fear of maintaining your wealth. Mm -hmm. So I'm very wealthy now. And oh, my God, that means I have to work harder. I have to make sure that it doesn't because I'm afraid of losing my wealth. Right. And that happens to so many people. They all fall into that trap. And then they yes. even, even when they have it, it's, it's never enough. Or they get the fear of they're going to lose it. And they still overwork themselves and stress themselves. And they're never happy because they never feel they have enough. And they keep going and going and going and going and going where they they should be have gratitude and look at the things they have. And oh, they, you're already going ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll keep my mouth shut. <laughs> no, that, that's cool because that means we're definitely on the same page. Yeah. And, and uh, yes, always be grateful for what you have and, and expressing your gratitude, because if you express your gratitude to the universe, then the universe says, oh, they like this. Let's give them more. Right, right. Consider your image. What is your image with lots of money? What it would mean in your day to day life? Mm -hmm. You need to create a picture with great detail. Yes. The more you can get into what life would be with more money, the easier it will be for you to get there. Right. But you do need to know something. In our deep in our psyche, we are made to achieve something, to find fulfillment. Mm-hmm. And saying, oh, I want a lot of money because then I can go on vacation for the rest of my life does not work. Right. Your your higher self will not let that happen. So mm -hmm. if your reason to have money is so you can do nothing, that doesn't work. You, right. do, need, you do need to figure out uh, what you want to to do with your life now have right money may oh okay i can uh, now i always wanted to have a restaurant okay i'll have the restaurant i'll right. do this i'll invest in it and and i'll find some sort but you do need to find fulfillment yes i agree a hundred percent work less not more mm -hmm. so true so you want to increase your money, work less. Now, look, some people are really stuck. Mm -hmm. They're stuck because they go to work and they have a paycheck. Right. And so 40 weeks, 40 hours a week, so much money. Right. And so it's important to create several channels of income. Right. If one channel breaks down, yes, you, you have something to fall back on. But create channels that are not necessarily an exchange of time. Right. A good example is a salesperson. Mm -hmm. a salesperson who's on commission in the same phone call can sell a hundred of an item 
or a thousand of an item. Mm -hmm. And in the same 10 minutes, if he sells a thousand, tenfold it is income. Yes. So you you need to look at what you can do now with with all the um, social media and all the interconnectivity and how easy it is to build a website. You can create something that runs on its own. Right. You know they they talk about sales funnels and how. And, and it's it's only you know it's it's a sales gimmick, but it does work. So if you have a if you have some good item that right. you can that you have to present, you can use that. And and um, I mean, in my healing business, I see it. Um, I get to the office in the morning, and I have this email from uh, PayPal. You got money. <laughs> <laughs> And I didn't do anything about it. Right. They found me. They liked what they saw. They clicked go. And it turns out that somewhere along the line, some numbers in some sort of an account that I have control over have increased. Right. Now, in your way to become more abundant, you have to you have to use your imagination you have to use some future projection of where you wish to be right and you have to do that in believable increments mm -hmm. you can't say oh like uh, i'm going to win the lottery and you i mean some people do win the lottery but um the chances of winning the the super jackpot, I don't remember, like one to several hundred million. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and what's the likelihood? You're right. more likely being struck by lightning than winning the lottery. <laughs> so if you want, you know, if you make, let's say, $400 a week, and all of a sudden you want to make $3,000 a week, that may be too much of a jump right. to to be able to create that. So whatever you wish to achieve, you have to do it into believable increments. I agree. Allow yourself to receive. So our current energies of the universe are not focused on earning anymore. Mm -hmm. They're focused on receiving. So I'm, I made a very strong disconnect between what I do and the payments I receive. Right. What I do is my contribution to society, to the world, to other people, to, uh, to the goodness that exists. Right. And the payment that I receive for this is the universe giving me money. Right. I disconnected the causality, even though yes. there is some, but in my mind, there is not. Right. That's why when I come in and PayPal says, you got money, then, uh, oh, thank you, universe. You know, yes. thank you, thank you. More gratitude for yes. each, each payment that came my way. And the more I do this, the more it it happens that way. Right. So uh, did we, I don't think the doll we talked about marketing last last time. No, we didn't. Okay. Well, I, I don't do any marketing. I put myself out like on this show. Mm -hmm. There's... Uh, Daniel the healer is going to be mentioned somewhere. I put myself out there. And then I talk, talk to my spirit helpers. Right. And I tell my spirit helpers, go and talk to other people's spirit helpers. Tell them what I do. And right. if they think that who they help would benefit of what I do, 
then have them uch their people to find me. Right. Through some magical connection, through some a friend told me or... Um, Oh, I read this this little blurb, and your name was mentioned, and it intrigued me. Or I don't know why I called you, but it looked it looked so interesting. I get people. I have no idea why I made this appointment. Right. And so that's the energy of receiving. Yes. And you need to cultivate the energy of receiving. Yes, a hundred percent. Making certain you don't have any charge. In creating reality, there is, quote unquote, a zone. Mm -hmm. If you don't put enough effort, it doesn't work. Right. If you put in the right amount of effort, it tends to work. Mm -hmm. And if you put in too much effort, it will right. not work again. Mm -hmm. So there's this zone right. called the reality creation zone. But if you have charge, like I absolutely, absolutely have to get this money or they will evict me. Right. That's charge. There's too much other energy involved with it and it will sabotage the flow. Right. Now also, one has to understand that things don't are not linear. The Federal mm -hmm. Reserve wants everything to be totally linear. Yeah. So they play with the in interest rates to grow the economy very linear. No, there's ebb and flow. It, it, it goes in a wave-like form. Yes. The, and so there will be times where there's less and there will be times where there's more. Mm -hmm. What you overall need to look at is that the high of the wave is eventually, it goes up and up. And then the low of the wave eventually will be higher than a previous high of the wave. Right. So that's the progression you need to look at. And finally, uh, this is something that again, my my uh, spiritual teacher told me, and that is to do a, a green candle ritual. Mm -hmm. So that's a ritual that's done with two white and green candles, and is a a little complicated to explain. So I'm going to cut to the chase. If you are interested in this ritual, email me. Daniel at danielthehealer.com and uh, I will send you a copy. It's at least 15 minutes to explain and we're kind of coming to the end of our uh, hour here. Man, this went fast. as you. <laughs> <laughs> so I would like to remind everybody that I do these free healings twice a week. Go to ihealyourpain.com and register and once you're registered, you get notified every Wednesday at 10 a.m., every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And uh, that's basically all I have to say. And if you had to sum this up, like, let's say if you had wanted to give people a couple of different points, you know, and emphasize on a couple of different important aspects of what we just discussed, what would you like to tell the listeners? Attitude. They need to be in the attitude of abundance. Mm -hmm. they, they, it's just, you you cannot be in scarcity. Sca that's the energy. When you're in scarcity, it's, your life becomes scarce. You somehow need to, and uh, I talked to you about fake it till you make it. Mm -hmm. You just need to, to be in the sense of abundance. If you don't have financial abundance, there must be something in your life that you're abundant. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're abundant in struggle. You struggle every day. So maybe you have abundance of struggle. You've realized that the struggle is not only the struggle of 
the struggle, but that you're in abundance of struggle. And if you can take the concept of abundance and move it into finances, into money, into uh, comfort, into the good life, mm -hmm. then your attitude will change and things will open up. I like that. I like that a lot. Now you have another website also. You have... I have Daniel the Healer where I do my private healing practice. Now, what different services overall do you do so people know exactly the different services that you provide for people? I am, a like I said, I'm a holistic healer. So I work with, uh, with uh, challenges on the physical, on the mental, on the emotional, on the spiritual. I do something very specific uh, that I call psychic chiropractic. Uh, where I align people's skill structure. I'm a medical intuitive, meaning that if you went from doctor to doctor and nobody can figure out what's wrong with you, then um, maybe it's not really on the physical. And since I understand how things interact between the physical, the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual, um, then we can trace the source of what's going on and I can help you release that. Um, I work with people in clearing traumas, uh, emotional difficulties uh, from the past, any unresolved issues from the past that drag on you. Um, a lot of people, you wouldn't believe it, they're in their mid fifties and they still have mommy daddy stuff. Yeah. So I help them uh, get rid of that. And uh, I help them connect with their soul, higher self and to become spiritually more enlightened. I love it. I love it. And if they go to IHearYourPain.com, what do you focus on on that website? That's the access into my free healing sessions that I okay. do every week. Excellent. Uh, I do a tune-up. I have nine areas of tune-up that I work with every week, which makes certain that people's energy field is charged up and so that it's easier to, you know, uh, people are funny at times. You you have a car, you you take it to um, uh, service, oil change. Oh yes, I've done my oil change. I'll never have to do another oil change anymore. No, every three or 5,000 miles you go in. Right. You in. We too, we have wear and tear. We yes. interact with other people. Some people are really downers and we interact yeah. with these people who are so these, these extraordinary downers and it's going to bring you down. A hundred percent. It's, it's just, you know, you, you, you're close to their energies. Yeah. If you're, if you're like borderline uh, suicidal and you go into an office building and you step into the, the elevator and you're, in an elevator with a person whose intention is to go to the top floor and jump off the building, this may take you over the edge. Right. And so I pump you up every twice a week, every week regularly for you to be able to continue broadcasting your light. I love it. I love it. This is awesome. Oh my God, Daniel, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for coming on today. And I want everyone to know that Daniel has a podcast series with us. He's in our podcast community. You can watch all his episodes on his uh, podcast. And he is also available to answer any questions, to provide you with any services you need. And all that information will be in the description box. And uh, once again, I thank you so much for coming on today. You have been amazing, like always. And this has been a very enjoyable experience. Thank you for all your wisdom and knowledge today. And I, I love it. I think it's going to get help people see life from a different perspective and maybe help pe turn people's lives around because you provide a lot of great information. And thank you so much. Well, you're most welcome. So to everybody, I wish you all the best and be well and farewell. Okay, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.